Hi everyone, uh, this is Benjamin Payot speaking, uh, Product Manager at Exo Platform. Uh, so we will have today a webinar and um, we will start, we'll just wait a few minutes, maybe two minutes, three minutes, just uh, to let a little time for people to join uh, and then I will start. So I will just wait until two and maybe five, just a few more minutes. Okay, so let's start. Um, I will show you a small presentation. So uh, today, uh, the agenda of today for this webinar uh, will be a general presentation of Exo Platform. Uh, we will start with a, a small uh, introduction about who we are at Exo Platform and what is Exo Platform for, uh, the new version of the platform. And uh, that will be around about 15 minutes. And, uh, and then we'll go into a, a general overview, a demonstration of the platform, of Exo Platform 4, and uh, it will take about 20 minutes. So of course, it's a webinar, so if you have questions, uh, you can keep your questions to the end. Uh, we will keep some time, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, for questions and answers. So please keep your, your questions to the uh, Q&A session and uh, because I won't be able to answer during the presentation. Thanks for your understanding on that. So who we are at Exo Platform? I will start with uh, some quick facts and a little background of the company. Um, just about EXO itself, it has been founded in 2003, uh, thanks to our first customer, that was the, uh, the DOD, the Department of Defense, the US Department of Defense. Uh, we have been venture backed in 2010, and today we have headquarters in San Francisco in the US, as well as in France, which is the uh, global headquarter. Uh, important fact, we have been listed in 2012 in the Gartner's Magic Red Round for horizontal portal offering. And some other quick words about the company. Uh, we have some veterans from JBoss, Red Hat, HP, Oracle. So we build a product based also on their experience in these large companies. And uh, just to talk more about now the technology and the experience again, uh, we have a long Java story. Uh, we implemented the first portlet specification back in 2002, and that was the GSR 168. And it led to the first customer, the US DOD. Uh, as you will see, uh, Exo Platform relies on a lot of open standards. For us, it's very important because we have open source foundations. And, uh, and so we rely on open source standards and uh, a lot of standards, like just to name some of them, CMIS for content management inter interoperability, the GCR, which is the content repository, it's another Java specification. Uh, for those who are technical, it's the GSR 170. We rely on portlets, open social, the specification from Google, etc. So I won't name all of them, but uh, just for you to know that it's uh, an important uh, thing for Exo Platform. And uh, <clears throat> one last thing, we did a spin off uh, at the beginning of uh, this year. Uh, with a new company named Code Envy, 
So now we have two companies, ExoPlatform, focusing on the user experience and intranet user experience, and another company which now uh, does the uh, web IDE development, and which is uh, Code Envy. If you want to know more about Code Envy and the web IDE we use in the product, and just go in codeenvy.com and you will have uh, a lot of, of information there. I'll come to that maybe again during the presentation. So what is ExoPlatform? Uh, ExoPlatform is an open source, social, collaboration, software, solution designed for the enterprise. So that's a lot of keyword, um, actually. And uh, just to explain them, so open source, I already told about that. Uh, social, uh, yes, we have a social network platform, uh, but it's not about that. Uh, mostly the social feature we have in the product is, uh, is here to help the collaboration inside the platform. So we will go into that into the demonstration. So I won't go into all the details right now. And um, of course, it's a collaboration software. Uh, we will go into that as well. And it has been designed for the enterprise. So we rely on a top of standards, as I said, uh, but also we are, we, are, we are very focused on enterprise integration. So we provide a lot of uh, enterprise connectors, etc. Uh, again, I will go into that uh, during the presentation. And um, it comes fully featured, uh, standard-based, extensible, and people say that we also have an amazing design, so it's a bonus. Uh, it's what people say, so it's a good thing also, also for EXO. Okay, so just a quick word about social. Uh, you know that today social is everywhere. Uh, you have a lot of solutions uh, which are social. Uh, so we believe in social. We, uh, we were developing social software back in already in 2007. So for us, uh, it's, it's here for, for a long time, since a long time. Um, but now we think that social is enterprise ready. So we have a social centered product. And uh, you will see with the, with the product and the, the price offering, uh, we think that now we have an enterprise ready solution which gives social enterprise with the affordable, the affordable way, sorry. So some information about our technology. So what is ExoPlatform? Uh, so you have this nice graph here. Uh, as you can see, the social platform, um, the, the goal of ExoPlatform is to provide an all-in-one single platform. So where you get, of course, the social platform, but around it, you have a strong portal foundation where you can build um, business portals. You have a strong document management. You have knowledge management with forums, with wikis, with answers, with FAQs, etc. Uh, you have collaboration management with calendar, event sharing, uh, task sharing, um, the wiki again, so you can collaborate together in spaces using the social network in ExoPlatform. So what we want to do actually in ExoPlatform is to provide this all-in-one user experience and all of this running together uh, in, the, in the same place. But uh, of course, you can run ExoPlatform uh, in the cloud. You can also install ExoPlatform. There's different um, flowers in ExoPlatform. And we also have mobile applications because today, um, if you're on the go, if you're not in your company, it's, we think it's important to, to stay connected with what's happening in the company. So for that, we provide mobile applications, both on iOS and Android. So still, even if you're on the go, you still have access to the ExoPlatform, to your intranet. Some quick features. So of course, we can start with the social features. In the social features, just to name some of them, uh, you can manage your user profiles, connections, activity streams. In the collaborative features, we have spaces, wikis, forum. So spaces are the place where uh, you can work with, by, with groups, with individual peoples, and you can share your work. Uh, we will see that during the demonstration. Of course, we have some content features like document management, where you can organize your files. Uh, another part, which is not uh, mostly visible in the intranet demonstration, uh, is that with the solution, with the platform, you can also create websites. So you can either use the ready-to-use intranet user experience, 
provided by default in Exo Platform 4. But you can also create a website like an extranet or your own public website, for example. And of course, in the content features, uh, we provide a unified search so that everything you store in the platform is searchable and then you can search it from anywhere in the platform. And some of the productive features, uh, people can create their own dashboards to organize their work. You can, of course, configure your calendars. You can work with tags, etc. Et, et, et uh, a quick word about extensibility. Um, it's, an, it's a very important um, fact for the platform because it's not just the intranet experience. It's not just to have an intranet websites. Uh, the idea is to provide a platform so you can extend it. So here I'm not, I'm, I'm more talking to, to partners and customers who want to integrate existing software into the platform. So that's where we focus on that. Uh, in the platform, we have an application container, so you can integrate your own applications. And we also provide APIs, both Java and REST APIs. So you can, on one hand, leverage our own APIs and use our own services like the, the social API, the content API, etc. And But you can also um, create and push your own APIs into the application, into the platform. So this, this, this is the way to work with the platform. And I was talking about ContentV. Uh, the platform comes as well with a web-based ID. So you can even develop right from within the portal, right from within the intranet using the web ID. And this way, you can create new REST services or even new applications. So you can create a gadget, do some mashup with REST services, and integrate a new applications into the platform. Of course, um, about, again, the application containers, we support portlets. So you can develop your own applications using your desktop IDE, like Eclipse, NetBeans, uh, or uh, IntelliJ IDEA, for example, and you can deploy your application in the platform. So it's just about the accessibility here. And I was talking about the enterprise portal features at the beginning. Um, an, important, an important thing as well for a platform, uh, we provide the portal framework so, you can, so that you can customize your own portal. Um, just a quick word about the portal foundation and the portal framework. Uh, ExoPlatform is based on the, the Gate-In portal. It's an open source project co-developed by Red Hat, JBoss, and ExoPlatform. And what we do in ExoPlatform is we, we add uh, a great UI composer on top of gate -in so that you will get the same user experience in the enterprise portal that you get outside or in the intranet applications. And a quick thing about enterprise integration. And just there's a small question. No, I think it's okay. Sorry. Yes, I was talking about uh, enterprise integration. Sorry. Uh, so one last thing. Uh, Again, is if you choose to install ExoPlatform in your in own infrastructure, uh, then you can connect with your own existing software. Like, for example, if you have an enterprise directory, you can connect it to ExoPlatform for the authentication or, of, or authorization. For example, you can use an, an Active Directory for the authentication and open LDAP or an Ibernet or the same Active Directory for the authorizations. Uh, you can also use your own SSO. Uh, this is so you have already today. And again, it is based on standards, Java standards, standards mostly. So again, if you have a custom solution, like for the, the SSO or the, uh, uh, the authentication, you can change the default login modules and create your own. So it's all part of the uh, enterprise integrations. One last thing about um, the enterprise portal features, uh, a quick word about multi-tenancy and elasticity. So uh, these are two big words. Um, I will go back to uh, Code Envy and the, uh, the spin-off with Exo Platform. Uh, actually, we started working a lot on multi-tenancy um, 
back in 2010, like three years ago, uh, we were developing an IDE and we wanted this IDE to be a multi-tenancy, uh, to be elastic. So you can, it can be running in the cloud and you can create different tenants. So we worked a lot on multi-tenancy and elasticity in the product. We created a software around that. And today, CodeEnvy is using this exo technology to run uh, CodeEnvy.com. And just to take, um, just to give you some numbers, uh, last time I checked, uh, CodeEnvy, they have more than 70,000 tenants in the cloud. Uh, I think that they can run like 6,000 6, tenants per server, something like that, or 2,000 tenants per server. So that's quite a lot. So it allows to create virtual machines and servers, application server on the fly, as well as new tenants. So if you have a new company, a new customer, you can create a new tenant, like a new website, and they, they are totally isolated in terms of security and data management. So that's uh, the entire part of the, uh, of the platform on this aspect. And why am I talking about that? Um, First, of course, if you go on ExoCloud, the, the cloud offering of Exo Platform, that's the technology we are using. Uh, but as I was saying, we provide an on-premise solution so you can install Exo Platform in your own company. So in this case, you will use maybe one server, uh, but we also have for very large companies, if you have a strong need of multi-tenancy, uh, you can talk with us and we can uh, you can also use our own technology, so it's it's also possible. And one last thing uh, about mobile. As I was saying at the beginning, we provide free applications for the uh, marketplace and uh, the apps on the App Store, so both for iOS and Android handsets. And in these applications, you can find uh, your activity stream, so the place where you have all your activities, you can have access to all your files and your dashboards. So it's um, also important for us to provide a mobile experience because as I was saying, if you're not in the company, if you're not at your office, you on the go in a train, something like that, uh, then uh, you still need to, to be able to access the company intranet so you get, you're, not, um, you're still connected with the company. Uh, some quick words about customers and partners. Uh, I will start with bank insurance. We have a lot of customers in the bank and insurance sector. And just to take one, the Caixa Bank is the second bank in Brazil. Uh, they have a few projects with Exo Platform. Uh, one of them is running with 50 mi 15 million authenticated users in the platform and 15,000 contributors working actively every day on the platform. We also have present in the government sector. Uh, again, just to take uh, one of them, uh, maybe the NATO. Uh, we were chosen by the NATO um, for the security of a platform. And we also work of tools in the private sector. So again, just to take one, I will take Red Hat. Um, the Red Hat website is running with Exo technology and it's a multi multi language websites available in 27 languages uh, using the exo technology um, behind it and the web content solution so exo platform at exo platform we are an editor so that means that we provide a software and we support the software even if it's an open source software so that's what we do uh, we have experts so we can help you uh, by some consulting, but mostly we rely on partners, on value-added partners. Again, just to name some of them, uh, big big names like Accenture, Capgemini, Zizin, UK, uh, Atos, in, Atos in France, uh, etc. Uh, for Linux in Brazil. Um, so all these partners are certified with Exo technology, so they can install and customize the platform. So if you're a customer, uh, and you want to start with Exo and you want to, you need to customize or to install or to add some customization extensibility on the platform, uh, we can connect you with existing partners. And if you are a partner, uh, we also have a lot of projects and we need partners. So if you want to become a partner with Exo, you can talk to us and we can, uh, I think, find some customer together, some project together. Uh, and one last word about the OEM partnerships. Uh, we have a few of them. 
Um, for example, we have a strong partnership for workflows with Bonita Soft. So you can embed the Bonita business processes and the Bonita workflow engine inside ExoPlatform 4. Uh, I was talking already with JBoss. We could develop gating together. We also have a partnership with Sugar CRM to integrate CRM in the solution. We have JasperSoft for reporting, with Convertigo for mashups, etc. Okay, so what is the business model of, of ExoPlatform? So ExoPlatform is an open source company. So mostly it is based on the open of, of the standard open source model, business model. Uh, I will start from the, the, the bottom of the slide actually. Uh, so it's an open source company. So yes, we provide a community edition. Um, it's free to use. For us, it's limited to evaluation purpose. And um, it's available um, in the, the in source search for the uh, community edition. So you can download it and you can play with the platform. We then have two different editions, the Express edition, which is more targeted for uh, small and medium companies, and also the Enterprise edition, uh, which provides highly extensible platform for, with enterprise class features. So this one is more ideal for large companies, large enterprises, where you want to build collaborative portals, etc. So just to compare these editions, ExoPlatform supports the enterprise edition mostly. So on this one, we can provide up to 24 seven production support and we provide upgrade, updates and bug fixes. Uh, and it comes with advanced features such as uh, LDAP, SSO, multiple apps, servers, ID, etc. It comes with a commercial licensing. Uh, the community edition on the other hand comes with the LGPL open source license. And the Express edition is uh, the in-between solution if you want to start with Exo today, you can start with uh, the Express Edition and the support will be limited. Uh, you will have mostly community support, but you will have access to upgrades and updates. And about the pricing for this Express Edition, the in-between one, uh, it starts with a 20, 25 user plan, uh, $1,200, so that's $4 per user per month and goes up to 500 users. So for like the price of a coffee per user per month, $1 per user per month. And of course, the enterprise edition, the pricing is different. It is based on cores, the numbers of cores you will need. I'm talking about CPU cores. So it will, the pricing will be based on that. And um, if you have a project who will need which will need the enterprise edition, you can contact us, contact the platform, and we can organize uh, a meeting together on that and to explain more about the platform enterprise edition. And finally, as I was saying, we're an editor, we're not a, a consulting company, but we provide consulting services, professional services. So if you take the Express Edition, you can start with an evaluation program like the Quick Start program. We also provide training for partners, developer training, administrator trainings, and customers, and user training, administrator training. Uh, and we also do some consulting. We have a consulting team, so we can help you uh, on proof of concepts to develop custom solutions based on the platform or to manage migration from, for example, Jive to Exo or another solution. So that's uh, that's it for the, the quick tour. Again, uh, I won't take the questions right now. Uh, I will wait to the end of the demo and then we will go into a quick Q&A session. So now I will show you the platform. So I will close that. So the first thing is, okay, if you want to test Exo platform, you can go on exoplatform.com. So that's the main website. And uh, from there, you can try Exo online. So you can go in, uh, enter your business email, then you can enter the form and try Exo. You will be redirected and uh, you can subscribe to exoplatform.net, which is the Exo cloud uh, offering in, in where you can create your own tenant and start playing with Exo platform. Uh, you can also download Exo platform uh, in the download section in, on the website. And what you will get is, um, if I open it, I already downloaded it. You will get a zip file with ExoPlatform in it. So from that point, it's very easy. You unzip that file, just do it. 
So you get an Exo Platform 4. Uh, you've got some installation notes and uh, documentations. I'll just show you, show you how it works to start it. So I will just open a terminal. So actually, I'm on a Mac. On Windows, you will open the prompt, or you will double click on the start exo.bat file. But on my side, I will do, I will go into C, this folder. So I'll just drag and drop on Mac. And from there, I will start Exo Platform. OK, so it will, it will just take uh, a few seconds just to work. OK, so until it's done, I will show you exoplatform.net. So if you go on exoplatform.net, if you want to start today, you can log in exoplatform.net. And uh, actually, I will go into my tenant. So this is the tenant for Exo Platform. And actually, it's not working. So let me just go there. Yes. I will enter. So when you created your, your tenant, what you will get is the login screen. And from there, you can log in into the platform. And I hope that by the time I showed you this, I will get the login screen for the, the local platform I was starting. So what I did here is I started the platform locally. So then what I will do is I will go in the platform. So I will go on localhost. And I'm just entering some information so I can set up the platform. John Smith and an email. So that's, again, it's local installation. So that's what you get when you install the platform for the first time. You have these small greetings. And that's it. Now you've got an administrator profile. You change the root. That's the super admin profile and password. And now you can start playing with the platform. You can go to the administration and add users. And you can start playing with the platform. So because it will take a lot of time to create new users, what I will do is I will now stop this one. So it was quite quick. And I will start another one, which, is, which has already uh, users and data inside it. So again, start it again. By the time starting, I will just show you some of the things you have on this screen. So when you start Exo Platform, uh, you have an access to your application. So that's the ready to use intranet user experience. You have an access to your connections, to the wiki application. So you can organize your work by spaces. And we will come into that in a minute. Uh, here, I'm connected with an administrator. So I can do a lot of things like editing the website, or managing the administration of users, applications, etc. So it's you have access to all of the features. And I've got nothing in my today view right now. And then I've got the micro blog in the center of the screen. So the other server should be almost started now. So I will log into the other server. Again, it takes just a few seconds. Waiting for it to start. Yes, I think it's okay. It started. So now it will come. Okay, so that's the same page. Uh, but now, as you can see, we have default data and uh, uh, some extensions. So this is the, the same platform you get when you download the product or when you install Exo Platform 4. Uh, I just installed a few extensions, like uh, a way to uh, view your news, some contents, or the chat add-on. But besides that, it's the same platform. It's just with sample data inside it. OK, so I will just start with a, a standard user. I will start with my user, with Benjamin, just to give you a quick tour. OK, 
Okay, so as you can see when you log in the platform, uh, what you get is uh, this landing page within the center of the screen, the activity stream. And here you will find all the collaboration you've, you have in the company. So the collaboration coming from your network, the people you're connected with, and as well as connect information, then activities from your projects. So when I talk about projects, uh, I talk mostly about spaces. Uh, this is the way to uh, work together in the platform. So as for, as just to take one example, I will go in the bank project. So in this case, for example, that's the bank project. We have a new project in the company called bank project. Uh, it's a, we're working for a bank. So what I do, I can, create a, I can create a new space. I can invite people and I can invite developers. I can invite a functional manager. And then we can work together, the sales guy, and we can work together. Uh, the thing here is that you will get access to all the applications we provide, like the document application. And here you can share all the files related to this project, like the RFP, uh, a presentation, a quotation file, etc., as well as like evaluation documentations, etc. And uh, the great thing is you don't have anything to configure. It's out of the box. It's everything is private for the for the members of this space, and as well as secured. Uh, still, for example, if I go in the wiki section, if you if you if you have a page in the wiki, as you can see, it's restricted. When you have a page, it's restricted, uh, but still you can share it, share it. You can make it public, or you can manage individual permissions. So, but by default, uh, everything you create inside the space will be private and totally secured inside this space. So it's not limited to projects. Uh, you can also build spaces based on the existing um, user directory. So for example, you can attach a space to a group. Like here, we have human resources space, which is attached to the human resources group. Same thing for marketing analytics. Uh, all the people from the marketing team are attached to this space dynamically. And you can also build community spaces like public discussion space, where here it's a public one. Anybody can join the space. But again, you will find access to uh, all the applications. You can create polls. People can vote on polls. People can discuss in the company's forum so they can get here in this example uh, general information about the company. If it's a newcomer, he can find uh, new information about what to do if I join the company, etc. OK, now I go back to the uh, landing page. So now I think be you better understand what is the activity stream. Here you will find all the activity coming from your network, your connections, and from the spaces you are, you are a member in. If, you have, if I go on the right, I've got a quick view on my uh, today's agenda, today's tasks. I can see, I can have a quick look on my invitation. So I can see that Jack wants to be connected with me. And again, I've got some suggestions based on my network uh, to be connected with people or existing spaces. And because it's it's a platform, you can customize it. You can customize the page, and you can customize uh, also the the page and the intranet based on profiles, based on the current user. In this example, I'm like a project manager. So what I get when I log in the platform, I get a project sprint summary. If I log in with another user, I will just, for example, log out from this one, and I will log in using Okay, using James, a very standard user. You can see that James, in this case, has a gamification application. So I can say, what is his mood? So I can say if, it's, if he's happy today or not happy. Uh, it's just pushing some gamification in the, in the intranet experience. Uh, you can see that this user cannot post in the activity stream. And if I log in with another one, uh, with someone from the human resources team, I will have a different view if I connect with Mary. Here, I can post in the uh, company's uh, microblog. So I can say uh, that uh, we have a very happy people today. So that's pure social stuff. So 
on the human society side, we can say it. We can see that the mood trend is quite good today. Still, I've got some unhappy uh, users in the platform, so maybe I can uh, contact them and uh, talk to them. So that's also a nice way for communication team or human resources team in the company to get information and to, to, get in, to get contact with the different people in the company. And it will be the same for uh, a C, the CEO, the CEO of a company. If I log in with, again, another user, just to show you one final scenario. So Robert is the CEO of a company. So again, he has a different view. He's connecting to some spaces and he can have a quick look on the, on the activity in the company, as well as the market trends or the, the company stock. So it's, again, it's using the same platform same page but here based on the user based on the profile on the current profile we, we won't get the same information okay to go again with uh, all the features i'll just show you some of the applications we have in the platform so for example if i go in the wiki if I want to find some documentation about the company, I was talking before that uh, you, we, if you are a newcomer, maybe you can, you can search some information. So you go in the wiki, you have the general section. Here you can find all the general knowledge of the company, like the intranet team organization. So you can contact people. You can find who is new in the company, what is new. You can also find like uh, specifications. Here we have a specification. So it's maybe not the right place for the specification, but it's just to give you an example. Uh, you can also create meeting notes. We have a specific view for meeting notes, etc. How to guide, etc. So the wiki is really here uh, to collaborate together and to share knowledge in the company. And to edit pages, it will be very simple. You go into a, a, wiki, a wiki page and then you can uh, edit the page. In this case, this page was added by John and uh, it's restricted, so I'm not allowed to edit it. So I will one final time log in with a final user and I hope it will be the last time. I will go with John in the wiki section. And now you can see if I go in the how to guide, here I can edit the page or I can edit some part of the page. I can edit in the rich text editor. We have, um, as you type, we save the page so you never lose your content. It will be the same when you edit the content. So that's uh, basic wiki uh, applications. And of course, because extensibility is again, very important. Uh, it comes with macros so you can extend the wiki features and create your own macros and extend the wiki application as well. Okay, to take another example of the document application, it's a, a strong document management, uh, but very easy to use. We wanted it to be very easy to use. So for example, if you want to share a document, I want to uh, go in the bank project, I have a new specification to share. So I will go in the document section, that's the same app. And I take the new presentation, this one PowerPoint. Again, I'm on a Mac, but it's the same thing on Windows. And I can drag and drop the file. I can also drag and drop multiple files, upload multiple files. And I'm generating a preview of a document and I'm sharing this activity in the activity stream. So as you can see, immediately, if I'm on the go on my iPhone, I just have my iPhone in front of me, I will receive a real-time notification about this documentation in the project. So I can, and I can even consult the document from within my iPhone. So it's, it's always the goal of the social features, as I was talking about that before. Uh, social for us, the social activity stream and the social activity is more to, to help and to improve the collaboration inside the company. Like for example, if I'm mentioning someone, I'm with, and I can mention someone like Mary, I can share that. Again, I will push this activity to my network and even if people are not connected to Mary, they, they will be able to discover Mary's account so they can connect with Mary. Uh, they can call Mary with the real-time features. They can go in Mary's profile so she, they can find information about Mary, uh, have a look on her activity stream so they can see on what Mary is working. So it's not private, it's a public activity stream for the company. 
Uh, they can check connections, or maybe they can find new connections even using the social features. And one final example, it will be more uh, for uh, partners, even if it's a, a UI example. I can go in the calendar. So we provide a calendar with uh, a lot of features, so you can um, create remote calendars, so you can attach remote calendars from Google directly inside the platform. You can create events, rec recurring events, tasks, etc. The thing I want to show you here is the different views on the generic aspect and the space uh, in the space context. Uh, so here we have an application. As you can see, I've got uh, a, few a few calendars, like my personal calendar, and some group calendars, like the calendar from the public discussion space. Now, if I go in the public discussion space, again, we find the same applications. But now, as you can see, if I go in the agenda application, we don't have the left view, the left panel, and I just see the current context. So I just see the current events for these calendars. Uh, why am I talking about that? Uh, it's just for partners. Um, we have, in the extensions of the platform, you can develop an application, so it will work differently if you put these applications in a space or if you put the application in the in gener in a generic page. So again, it's just to be more efficient when you develop an application on Exo platform. Uh, you can develop one application, but you can have different views, so it won't react the same based on the profile or based on the context in the platform. So again, it's here it's more a developer thing or a way to uh, to uh, to be more efficient when you develop an application. Okay, and just to finish on the features, uh, we have a new application. We are working on, on chat integration, then real-time collaboration. So if I go in the chat, uh, here I can find uh, different, uh, again, my spaces. I can discuss with all the members of the public discussion, so I can say hi. And in the background, if I'm connected with John, John will receive notification. John can also talk to me. Um, and thanks to the Wemo integration, we have a partnership with uh, the Wemo company. Uh, you can also call people, um, like uh, video video conferencing or voice call, voice over IP, and also video conferencing inside inside the space. So here I can start a call for everyone in the space, and people can join the call. So it's again, it's what we want to do is to provide the user experience the same user experience inside the platform. So you don't have to go outside the platform to start a chat discussion or to start a meeting. Uh, you don't have to go on Skype, just to take this example, uh, invite people in Skype, totally outside your enterprise user directory. Here, everything is embedded with the same user experience of the platform. OK, and just to finish on this quick tour, um, I was talking about the Portal Foundation, how you can extend the platform, how you can change the pages, how you can push web contents, create a website. So for that, I will just go into the uh, go with the administrator and web contributor with John profile. I can go. I've got a quick example. Uh, it's a simple news page. So here it's just one page, but you can also build a website, a full website. And as a contributor, you can edit. The page layout, I can change the page layout so I can move things around. If I go, for example, again uh, back on the home page, if I want to push uh, the today's view at the top of the page, I can edit this page, edit the layout. So here it's more for web contributors. I will take this application, put that on the top. I can check with the view mode what are the applications. So, yes, uh, the calendar portlet, I will just put that at the top. Okay, the administration is at the bottom, and now I can save it. Now, as you can see, my today's view is at the top. The today's view is at the top, and it will be it will be the same for all the users. Uh, and like that, you can filter application based on permission. So you can say that this application, this administration application, is just visible by the administrator, for example. And if I go back in the news page, and if you want to push a new, if you are a contributor, like in the communication team, you want to write a new news for the company. 
your contributor so you can switch to the edit mode now as you can see when I go over a content I've got this nice view where I can edit the content so for example I want to change the company I want to update this company content so I will just go on this content I can update the title just by double clicking on it double clicking on it so it will be a company overview I can say that you can see that now I've got a draft version of this content I can change this content as well the body as well I can say that uh, it comes from uh, Robert Bruce the CEO I can say that and now because I'm a publisher as well I can publish directly from there and as you can see in just a few seconds I updated the page in the website and all the users will see the you will see the new page of this uh, in the in the internet so they get the new information the company overview and the new text with from Robert Bruce so it's again providing easy way to uh, create contents and to update the website but of course if you want to access more features you won't do that you won't do so from the website from within the website uh, in this case you can go in the back office in the con what we call the content explorer you can see that this, you find the same view as for the document management. So you're not lost. You have the same user experience. And from there, you can manage uh, the permissions, relations, versioning of the file, publications of the document. If you have the uh, Bonita extension, the workflow extension, you can connect these publications to Bonita, etc. I, again, I won't go into all the features. There's too many of them. Um, but it's just to give you a general idea of a platform. So that was um, a quick look on the platform. So I think I will stop there. And uh, Mandy, now if you have some questions, you can uh, fire red, ask your questions. You can raise your hand and uh, ask your questions in the, uh, in the chatter or in the question sections. And I will try to answer your questions. We have 10 more minutes, so we still have time for questions. And of course, you can have functional questions if you want to see more things or uh, technical questions, and I will try to answer your questions. I will just wait a few seconds. Okay, there's one first question. What is the pricing of ExoCloud? Uh, so as I was saying at the beginning of this webinar, uh, we have uh, exoplatform.net, uh, which is the cloud version. And it will come very soon with uh, a premium access. So right now it's uh, free up to 20 users, if I remember well. And uh, very soon we will provide uh, more features with premium access, uh, like for example, uh, maybe the, the chat add-on extension. We are uh, still in the early adapter process on that, but uh, like these features like that will be available as a premium access. But for now, exoplatform.net or exocloud is uh, a free social internet, up to 20 users. Then if you need more features or if you need enterprise access or if you have uh, medium companies like a 500 users in your company, then you can go with the on-premise solution. The target is not ExoCloud in this case. Is there some of the questions? Don't be shy. Ah, it comes. A lot of them. OK. I will answer some questions and just before I answer, I will give you a link so you can download the platform if you want to download it today. 
it's on learn.exoplatform.com that download Exoplatform Express Edition. So from there, you will be able to download Exoplatform. I will keep this link in the bottom so you can, you can keep it. So there's another question. What is Web IDE? Uh, Web IDE is uh, an environment, a development environment in the directly available in the platform. Um, I don't think I installed it. Yes, I didn't install it. So I had, I have to stop and restart. I will do that in the background. I will just. So in the background, I will just stop the platform. Let's stop it. I will install the ID. So in the extensions, I will install the ID. So, oops, not this one. The IDE. Okay, and I will res and I restart the platform. Okay, so it will take a few a few seconds to restart. And I will show you the web based ID. So there's another another question about I was talking about add-ons, the chat add-ons. So again, uh, you can contribute and uh, create your own add-ons. But if you want to find some add-ons on Exo platform, you just have to go on GitHub Exo add-ons. Again, I give you this link. So it's github.com slash exo add-ons. And from there, you will find uh, a lot of add-ons working today on Exo platform 4, like, uh, like the Bonita extension, which is a free add-on, a blog extension, and like the chat application, which is also running on the, on the, back, on the sorry, on, the, on Exo platform 4. There's uh, the other question is how is it it is to integrate with another CMS? So by CMS, uh, for example, if you take um, the Life Ray Portal or Alfresco for document management or Jaya, I don't know about I don't know which CMS you're talking about. Uh, we provide our own CMS, our own solution in Exo Platform, uh, but we also have connectors like a, a CMS connector. So if you have today an existing CMS uh, following the CMIS specification, uh, compl compliant with CMIS, then we can also integrate uh, with CMIS. So it's, uh, it's one possibility. There's another question. When I add a portlet in a page layout, when I add a portlet in page layout, so change the UI of the portal. Yes, there's two different layouts, or actually three different layouts. Uh, if I, is it started yet? Yes, it started again. So I will just refresh with John. And just refresh everything. I've got to load the ID, everything. There's a lot of, okay, administration. So we were talking about the layouts. So if you change the layout of the page, I mean this page, you will change just this page. So if I remove a portlet from this page, edit layout, and I will remove uh, the, the calendar portlet. I can remove this portlet, this application, I can save. Okay, now it just changed this page, doesn't affect the other, the other pages. Uh, now I can also change, affect the global layout of the intranet by editing the portal layout. And in this case, if I edit the site layout, as you can see, we get different applications. So it's more if you want to customize as an administrator. But here, uh, if I want the, the, I don't know, the space navigation, it would be very ugly. Uh, I didn't test that, so but we can do so. I will just go here. I will save. As you can see now, I've got my spaces at the top and the company at the bottom. So it's quite the opposite. Uh, and if you go in the connections, I have the same layout. So now I, what I did is I affected the, the, the site layout. So it will affect all the pages in the site. Uh, there's another question. Can the chat function work with an existing open fire server or is it bundled? Uh, the answer is uh, we provide a web-based chat. Uh, it's running directly on Exo platform. And uh, for the chat server, 
uh, it's totally web based and uh, just so it's just HTML with jQuery uh, and web services and uh, we have you need a MongoDB database uh, for the chat to run so we don't have an open fire implementation anymore There's another question. Can you please give us more focus on the GCR, the Java Content Repository? Uh, that will be a, an, another, I think, another webinar. We are running out of time. So the GCR is quite a large subject. So uh, um, I would just decline. I'm sorry, I will just decline these questions. But if you have more questions after this uh, webinar, you, you can uh, send us an email, contact us, and uh, I will be glad to, uh, to give you more, more answers if you need more information about the GCR. But just technically speaking, the GCR is following the GSR 170 specification, the Java specification, and we are implementing and supporting the entire specification. So if you get some information about this Java specification on the web, uh, you will find actually a lot of information about the GCR. And if you type exo GCR on Google, you can Google it. I think you will find some information, some first information. But again, I will be glad to answer your questions, but after this uh, webinar. And there's another question. Can we install the web ID in the community in the community version? I'm not sure. I don't think that the ID is shipped in the community bundle. So I don't think it's, it's either shipped with it and installable with it. It comes with the Express and uh, mostly the Enterprise Edition. Uh, another question, is there a way to rotate SDR and SDRIOT log? Uh, they easily get bigger, and when they get bigger, it's difficult to open them in the text editor. Uh, yes, we can. you can rotate. Uh, we also we already improved uh, the, uh, not the SDR, but the log management in Exo Platform 4 uh, with automatic rotating. But you can also, it's totally using the standards of Tomcat or JBoss application server, so you can create your own log management. Can I share my screenshot? Uh, do you want to share your screenshot, or can you share a screenshot in Exo Platform? I didn't answer this question. Uh, if you want to share a screenshot to a user, uh, maybe you were talking about the chat application. So if you're in the chat application during a video conferencing, you can share your screen and you can also share documents and send files during a video conference in the chat application. So I will just answer to that if, if it was your question. Uh, another, another question, and we are really running out of time and there's still a lot of questions. How to create a new portal in EXO? Uh, it's very easy. Uh, Connected as an administrator, like here, I am an administrator. I will go in administration, portal, sites, and from there I can add a new site. So right now I just have nothing, so I can add a new site. I will just enter the portal name, label, description, some properties about the new site, some permission properties, like who can access the site, who can edit, and then portal templates. Here it comes with an anti portal, but we can, you can also uh, again, install extensions like a web accessibility template, uh, Acme templates, website templates, so you can create your own portal and your own website. Uh, another question, technical one, how to implement single sign-on? Uh, so EXO is based on JAS and uh, for the authentication and authorization. And for the single sign-on, we provide a single sign-on extension so you can connect uh, existing single sign-on. If you go in the EXO add-ons, we have an, access, an SSO extension, this one. And so you can use it, install it. And this one comes with uh, a few of them out of the box. I don't have the... Uh, on the wiki. It comes with uh, CAS, JOSSO, and OpenAM. And by the way, uh, back in the uh, in these add-ons, if you uh, if you want more information, if you want to uh, to to discuss about these add-ons, uh, we have a community website which is community.exoplatform.com. So I recommend you to create your account, to sign in, and to register in the community website, and you will find uh, the platform with all the uh, the information you need 
uh, about all the extensions. I think I will have to go with the other ones. Yeah. Some another one last question. Is conferencing possible, for example, to have an application plugin like GoToMeeting to conduct webinars? Um, so yes, you can do video conferencing with the uh, the chat add-on. Uh, there's no uh, webinar feature today with remote technology, uh, but we are dis we are discussing with them. But to be totally honest, we don't have uh, a webinar like like go to go to webinar features. But for go to meeting, yes, you can use the uh, I think we can you can use the uh, the chat add-on. Can you please provide a link to download the web IDE? Uh, there's, there's no need to, uh, to have a link. If you install Exo Platform, uh, if I go back to the, uh, to, the ter to the terminal, and if I go to Platform, to the installation folder, okay, you've got an extension folder and an extension, and you can list all the extensions. So if I start the extensions, like list, if I list all the extensions, everything is written in the, in, in the hell, by the way. I'm just going fast because we are running out of time. Uh, you see you have, uh, by default, the XM extension, CMIS, Crash, and the ID is part of it. So you can install very easily the ID extension. And one last question, and it will be the last one, uh, maybe one last or after this one, how to install templates. So you can install your own, um, your own platform. I'll just go back to the website. So you can create websites. Uh, of course, there's the content administration. And from there, you can manage the templates. So if you want to create a new news page, new type of contents, you can manage everything from the content administration, like managing new document types, list, list managing the metadata, the organization, the views of the content explorer, this application, uh, like the document management. You can even create new node types, manage the logs, and some advanced features like managing the categories, queries, etc. And there's a lot of things available in the content administration. And I will keep your email. Uh, there's someone with sending me his email, so I will send you an email just after this webinar. OK, so there's no more questions. Oh, actually, there's a few of them. Uh, I will have. Uh, One last question, uh, it's, is there any kind of plugin for developing X application in Eclipse? Uh, we don't have uh, official plugins. Uh, we are relying on standards. So you can develop uh, portlets following the standards, and there are plugins for them. Uh, but no, we don't provide plugins. Uh, there's no specific plugins for Exo because we are mostly relying on, on the standards. OK, so uh, we'll have to stop there. There's no more questions, hopefully. So thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, there's, uh, there will be a mo more webinars in the next week. Uh, so if you, are, if you want to know more, uh, stay focused. You can go on, uh, uh, follow the activities of ExoPlatform on blog.exoplatform.com. Uh, it may be how you, dis you discover about this webinar for today. And uh, if we publish another webinar, maybe a more technical one or a more oriented, maybe on the web ID or stuff like that, uh, it will come into the, uh, the blog.exoplatform.com. So thank you for attending this webinar and um, see you maybe another time.